Metformin is an amazing drug for type 2 diabetes, but does it work for longevity? Let's kind of look into some studies and then see if it's actually something that you should be taking for anti-aging and longevity benefits. So metformin is an anti-glycemic medication used for type 2 diabetes, not type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is for people that don't make any insulin. They need to inject insulin. There's no other treatment that will work. Type 2 diabetes is people that don't make enough insulin. So giving them something that increases insulin production like metformin is always first line therapy. Pretty much 99% of people that are diagnosed with type 2 diabetes are going to be given metformin right Right from the start, right from the jump, it's a very tried and true medication, 60 years worth of data, very safe and very effective um, for type 2 diabetes. But we want to look for a longevity because there was a study that said people that were on metformin with diabetes lived 15% longer than those that were not on metformin and did not have diabetes. Now, diabetes in itself is an aging disease. It kind of, you know, progresses worse and worse as time goes on. It's not something you want to have if your goal is to, you know, live as long as possible. It has many, many complications like neuropathy and cardiovascular disease and, you know, blindness and things like that. So you want to avoid diabetes as much as possible. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you to not get diabetes. You should know that by now. You should be exercising 150 minutes a week. So that's basically 50 minutes three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, something like that, or 30 minutes five days a week, a total of 150 minutes per week. All right, now we know metformin works for diabetes. We wanna see if it works for longevity. So let's look at some studies that are particularly looking at longevity, anti-aging with metformin and seeing if it has any benefit. So the first study is the one that I mentioned previously. People that were on metformin and had diabetes survived 15% longer than those that did not have diabetes and we're not on metformin. So this is an interesting result because basically people that were sick and were taking medication lived longer than those that were not sick, not taking medication, kind of a general way of looking at it. But if we take a few minutes and kind of dive in deep and try to figure out why this happened, you can kind of tell that people that have diabetes, they're going to be monitored by their physician more frequently, usually every three to six months. So they're going to the doctor way more often to make sure that their diabetes is under control and that they're taking their medication. Someone that's healthy or thinks they're healthy is not going to go to the doctor once every three months. They're going to go once a year, once every two years, once every five years, God knows. So we can't rely on, you know, just this kind of data. And the authors kind of figured that out themselves. In the end of the study, they said, we conclude that metformin should not be seen as a quick fix panacea. What the hell is panacea? A solution or remedy for all difficulties or diseases. Okay, if we get nowhere from this video, at least we learned a new word, panacea. Moving on, should not be seen as a quick fix panacea for aging at the expense of non-pharmacologic interventions such as diet, exercise, and lifestyle modifications. Indeed, the use of metformin may negate some of the positive effects of exercise and lifestyle and less favorable effects in older subjects was also emphasized by the diabetes prevention program. On the more positive side, we do accept that the use of metformin in the treatment of patients with type 2 diabetes is associated with a positive benefit on health span. Now, David Sinclair is probably one of the leading scientists when it comes to longevity. He supplements with metformin 800 milligrams at bedtime. Now, there are studies out there that say that metformin reduces exercise performance and kind of things that are related to exercise. So he also does a low dose, 800 milligrams compared to the usual 1000 milligrams twice a day. He does a lower dose. And on top of that, he skips it on the nights before he's going to work out. This is not a bad way of going about it. This is a pretty decent or good strategy. Okay, now we have this other study here titled the effects of metformin and lifestyle interventions on mortality in the diabetes prevention program and diabetes prevention program outcome study. In this study, there was 3,234 adults at high risk for type 2 diabetes. They were randomized to an intensive lifestyle intervention, masked metformin or placebo. The study lasted 21 years, which is a very long time. And the results showed that metformin did not influence mortality from all causes, cancer or cardiovascular disease. The study shows that metformin was not successful in extending lifespan. So a couple of the results of this study, its ability to decrease exercise performance and the results from the other study that said that it was not a quick fix panacea. So an otherwise healthy person is probably not going to really benefit from just taking metformin on its own. They're probably better off exercising and eating a healthy diet than taking a pill every single day. The current evidence, I wouldn't say, leads us to that direction. But if you do want to take it, let's kind of go over dosing. So the normal dosing for metformin is it starts at 500 milligrams daily. 
and then it gets doubled up to 500 milligrams twice daily, and then it gets doubled up again to 1,000 milligrams twice daily. That's mostly where people take their medication. Most people with type 2 diabetes end up titrated up to 1,000 milligrams twice daily. The reason why you titrate is because it has gastrointestinal side effects, which I'm gonna go over in a little bit, but that's basically the reason. Now again, David Sinclair takes a much smaller dose, 800 milligrams at bedtime, and he skips it on the nights before a workout, so it's kind of out of his system by the time he works out the next day. If you want to supplement, maybe that's a better way, 500 milligrams to 1,000 milligrams before bedtime, something like that, and then skip it on the days before exercise. That's not a bad way. Now, in terms of side effects, gastrointestinal issues are huge. A lot of people complain with stomach upset, nausea, diarrhea, things like that. It's a huge, huge side effect of metformin. A lot of people complain about it. We start you at a lower dose and then get you used to the medication until you go up to the, you know, the usual optimal dose of 1,000 milligrams twice daily. However, for longevity, we're probably gonna use lower doses at 500 to 1,000 milligrams. So the side effects of this gastrointestinal stuff is probably gonna be less likely and less prevalent. Another huge side effect of metformin is its ability to reduce B12 levels. It causes a B12 deficiency if you take it for a long time. So a complication of diabetes is neuropathy and a complication of B12 deficiency it's also neuropathy. So if you don't have your diabetes under control and you're not measuring your B12 levels, you're accelerating your rate of neuropathy. So it's very important to have your A1C and blood sugar levels and B12 levels measured consistently so that you're not increasing your rate of neuropathy. Another big side effect of metformin is lactic acidosis. This is a buildup of lactic acid because the body is just not able to get rid of it in time or excrete it in time. So this causes a buildup. This again is more prevalent with long-term use of metformin and also people that drink alcohol at a higher risk because alcohol also increases lactic acid. So if you have one drink, you know, once a week or something like that, not really gonna cause any problems, not really gonna increase your risk. But if you're you know, drinking five days every day throughout the day, or you're you know binge drinking five days, you know, even just once a week, five drinks at one time within two or three hours, this is gonna increase your risk of lactic acidosis. So you kind of want to be cautious of that if you are taking metformin. Okay, so the million dollar question is obviously, do we supplement with metformin for longevity for anti-aging benefits? The research currently does not point in the right direction that it does help with longevity or anti-aging. Aging. Um, the research says that you know after 21 years there was no increase in lifespan or health span for any of these patients. So I would probably stay away from metformin until we have more data because the side effects are kind of outweighing the benefits at this time. You might be able to get away with most of those side effects of metformin if you take it the way David Sinclair does at a lower dose once a day before bedtime and then skipping it on the nights before a workout. But I mean, the evidence doesn't really show that there's much benefit, so I wouldn't be supplementing with metformin for longevity at this time. Now, if you have prediabetes or borderline diabetes, then taking metformin might be a good idea to either extend the amount of time it takes for you to develop diabetes, or even better, reverse the effects and not have any diabetes whatsoever. Exercise and diet is still number one. I wouldn't replace that with metformin, but if you already have your exercise and diet well in check, and you're still you know, at risk for diabetes, you have prediabetes or something like that, then maybe metformin is the right next step for you. Always control what your healthcare provider before starting any supplement or medication. And thankfully, metformin is a prescription, so you have to have a conversation with the provider before being started on it. I also have a video on berberine, which I will link in the description. Berberine is very, very similar to metformin, but it's a natural supplement. In that video, I go over berberine and its effects on blood sugar, not necessarily longevity, but they work very, very similarly in berberine and metformin. So you might get similar results for longevity if you want to supplement with berberine instead of metformin. But that's it for this video. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content. Thanks for watching.